welcome to my kitchen. I am Rachel uh, and today we're going to do episode three of things I will no longer buy in the store in 2024. So join me friends as I attempt to make sandwich bread at home. <laughs> I'm a little intimidated, I'm not going to lie, because I have made bread at home plenty of times. But I've always used a bread machine and this is my first time attempting it without a bread machine. So we're going to be making the dough, putting it into a loaf pan and baking in the oven. Um, <laughs> this could either go really well or horribly wrong. <laughs> Will I have sandwich bread, bread at the end of the video? You're gonna have to stick around to find out if I do or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna be using the recipe here that comes with my stand mixer. Uh, so this recipe calls for warm water, um, one package of active yeast, dry yeast, sugar, bread flour, um, instant dry milk, shortening, and salt. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the um, warm water. I have um, a third of, three fourths cup of warm water here. I'm gonna grab my thermometer real quick and make sure it's not too hot where it's not gonna um, kill my yeast. So let's go ahead here and check it out. <clears throat> let's see. I'm right at 100 degrees, so we, we are good. We are good friends. So I do not have a package of dry yeast, so I'm just going to read what the back of here says. It says that one package is, uh, one package of active dry yeast is um, one fourth ounce, which would equal to be two and one fourth tablespoons of yeast. So I'm gonna go ahead. It says uh, to add the water. Um, the water, yeast, and sugar to your deluxe stand mixer, so your stand mixer, and let it rise for five minutes. So we're going to do, that was three-fourths cup of warm water. Now I'm getting my active dry yeast. And we are going to do two tablespoons. Or not tablespoons, teaspoons. Don't do tablespoons. Teaspoons, friends, teaspoons. And one-fourth teaspoon of yeast. And then it's the, this recipe calls for, let's see, um, one tablespoon of sugar. So I'm going to grab my sugar. I have a tablespoon here. Oh, I'm going to open my sugar. Oh, my goodness. Why was that on there so tight? Okay. Get my sugar in there. Does it say to stir it? Add water, yeast, sugar. Sorry, I'm looking down here at my directions because you guys, again, I'm a little intimidated. Uh, making bread my first time. So let's see here. Add water, yeast, sugar. Let it stand until f frothy. Hmm. So. It does not say to mix it, so we're just going to um, let it chill in here, I guess. You would think you would want to mix it around a little bit, but... All right. So, I'm going to pause y'all for five minutes, and then we're going to come back in five minutes and see, um, see how frothy our, um, our yeast and sugar is doing. All right. I will be back. All right, friends, I'm back. It's been about five minutes, and I think I'm going to add a couple more minutes to it because I don't think it's as bubbly as I like it to do, it be. It is frothy, but there is still some of the yeast that hasn't, um, it's still a little bit dry on the top, so I'm going to give it maybe another three more minutes. So we'll be back in three minutes to see where we're at. All right. We are frothy and we are bubbly. So I think it's time to move on to the rest of our ingredients. So it says um, after it's, um, until it's frothy and bubbly, 
add the remaining ingredients and then knead it for eight minutes. So the remaining ingredients would be two and a half cups of bread flour. So I'm gonna go ahead and, well, I'll do my shortening first. So it's one tablespoon of shortening. So I'm gonna do that first, get that out of the way. Move that over there. This in the sink. Then our bread flour here. It's two and one fourth cup of, is it one fourth? Or wait, two and one half cup of flour and again I'm referring to the um, to the uh, recipe in the book that came with my mixer and the cool thing about um, most of Pampers Chef uh, tools electric tools is they always come with a um, recipe guide so you can get started right away making your favorite recipes um, and yeah, so there's a bunch of fun recipes in here that comes with the stand mixer, not blender. Did I say blender? Might have said blender, I don't know. Who knows? Who knows, guys? I'm just, you know, talking. Talking to you. All right, so now that we've got our bread flour, and, it, and the recipe calls for bread flour, so... I'm using bread flour, I'm not using regular flour. And then, what is it? Um, one teaspoon of salt. And what is it? Three tablespoons of uh, instant, or, uh, instant dry milk, and I have this here. I don't use it very often, so I opted for getting the cheaper brand. It's still all, all the ingredients is non-fat dry milk, vitamin C and D, and that's it. So it's still, um, fairly, you know, uh, simple ingredients. It doesn't have a bunch of preservatives and stuff in there. So anyway. Some of the some of the great value brands are very similar to the more expensive brands. So always, I always suggest when you're shopping um, to look at the great value brands and compare it to the name brands, and you can make that decision on your own if it's something you want to go with or not. So, all right. So we've got. I'm just gonna make sure real quick. I have my sugar. My flour, my instant milk, shortening, and salt. All right, so we are ready, friends. We are ready. I'm going to move you guys over a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. I gotta move everything out of the way to move you over. Ooh, boom, here we are. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my base on my mixer here. I'm gonna come around and put my dough hook on here. And the really cool thing about um, this stand mixer is that it has preset functions. So all I have to do is come over here and um, put in the settings that I want and then I just set it and it beeps and alerts me when it's done. So it will automatically adjust the speed to whatever setting you have it set. It also has a custom there so if none of these settings work out for you, you can customize it to whatever you like. Um, but yeah, that's a great thing about this stand mixer is that it takes all the guesswork out of baking. So if you are not the best baker or you're a novice baker, this is a good um, item to get because it takes a lot of the guesswork out of the mixing, kneading, and um, uh, like mixing, kneading, and uh, what is it? Whipping. <laughs> that's the word I'm looking for. Whipping. All right, so I've got my stand mixer here, and we're going to go ahead and go to knead. And another cool feature of this is it always tells you what adapter you should be having on your um, on your mixer doodaddy. I don't know what that's called. <laughs> anyway, um, so it says eight minutes. It's already set at eight minutes, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit okay. 
And because it's at eight minutes, I'm gonna just go ahead and have it start. So it's gonna start off slow, like right now we're on speed one, but as it moves and starts kneading the dough, it's going to gradually get faster and faster until the dough, dough is completely kneaded. Why am I, that's going, well actually before I pause, um, I'm gonna go ahead and get out a bowl because it says that we need to um, transfer the dough to a large grease bowl and let it cover and let it rise for one hour. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a bowl and we're gonna go ahead and grease it together and uh, let it rise. All right, so I went and grabbed um, uh, the classic batter bowl and I'm just gonna put the bread dough in here because it has a lid so I don't have to worry about covering it with a dish towel. And I'm gonna go ahead and use a little bit of the shortening in a paper towel. Uh, to grease the pan with, or the bowl with, not the pan, bowl, the bowl, grease the bowl. So I went, so I'm gonna just take a paper towel, wrap it around my fingers and just mix it all around, mix and mix. Go up the sides with it. Another thing about using a glass bowl is, uh, move my hair out of the way. Another thing good about using a glass bowl is you can see where you've put the the shortening, so you know if you missed a spot or anything like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw this away and I will be back. Now that I'm back, I've got my bowl fully greased here. I'm just gonna go ahead and put the lid on it and just finish waiting for the dough to come together. We got about two minutes and 30 seconds left. All right, friends, um, the kneading is done. So I'm gonna go ahead and open my mixer. Grab my dough. This is what it looks like. Finger cross, friends, that this works out because I'm totally nervous. All right, so let's go ahead and put it in there. Very sticky. All right, and we will let it rise for one hour, and I will be back about an hour. And I've got my mat out here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this to you. And my loaf pan. So I'm gonna go to the microwave and grab out our dough. Uh, it says it wants us to flatten the dough into a rectangle about nine by 12 using our hands and then fold in the short ends. I'm, try I'm sorry. Sorry, my son is wrestling our dog at this moment. <laughs> is he good? Are we okay? All right, all right. Hey, that's what you get. Real life friends, real life. All right. So it says to flatten the dough into a rectangular nine by 12 using your hands and then fold the shorter ends towards the center into thirds and then roll to form a nine inch log. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and put this on our pastry mat. Our pastry mat is non-stick, so it's not going to stick to it. Hopefully, fingers crossed. And um, yeah, so, and then we'll put it in our pan here. I'm gonna just use one of our stoneware pans. And then, um, and then we have to let it rise for another 45 minutes uh, before we put it in an oven at 400 degrees 
for 15 to 18 minutes. So let's go ahead and get it all um, into a log shape and uh, put it in our pan. All right, friends. Oh yeah, it's definitely risen quite a bit. So let's go ahead and get our dough out here. And once you to do this, oop, I ripped it with your hands. Ripped it again. All right, and then it wants us to fold it in and then roll it. All right, so I think I think that's good, right? Um, I don't think it's nine inches though. I think it's more like five. So I guess we could try that again. Roll in the sides. I don't know. I'm getting mine having a hard time stretching it out. It's coming apart on me here. All right. Maybe if we roll it in like this, maybe? All right, I think, what do we got? That's about nine inches, okay. Um, I'm using, there's measurements on the edge here and I was just using that to measure. So then we get our pan, oh, gotta squish it a little bit together. All right. It is now in our bread pan. It says it wants us to cover and let rise for another 45 minutes. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and put a clean tea towel on here. We have it covered with our tea towel. We will be back 45 minutes. Um, I think I'm going to set a timer at like 35 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and start to preheat the oven at 400 degrees. And then, um, so by the time we do hit 45 minutes and let this rise again, it says to let it rise until it's above the edges of the pan. So it's got a lot to go for rising. Um, the dough does feel really dense, so <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I did something wrong. I don't know. So anyway, we shall see. Okay, I will see you guys back in 45 minutes. It has now been 45 minutes and we are done with the proofing all together. Um, let me go ahead and move you guys over here. So I have a tea towel on here and I went ahead and took it off and it has risen above the dish. And I have my oven over here preheated at 400 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick that in there and it says it takes anywhere from 15 to 18 minutes. I'm gonna go with 15 and then I'm gonna just check on it uh, to see if it needs more time than that. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick this in the oven. Set my timer for 15 minutes. Ooh, that's more. Timer. We're gonna start with 15. And then I will be back, guys, when it comes out of the oven. All right, friends. I got the uh, R2 C3PO mitts on. I ended up adding three more minutes. So the total minutes was um, 18. Because when I opened the oven, it wasn't quite golden brown on the top yet. So I went ahead and let it stay in there for another three minutes. But you guys what we made bread I tell you what I was so intimidated at the start of this video that this was not gonna turn out at all and it ended up turning out pretty good I will have to say though do you guys see that little edge there that when we were rolling it I didn't quite connect the dough enough there so it did kind of split 
But other than that, I think high five. Boom, we did it. Made bread at home. So again, I thank you all for joining me in my kitchen uh, as this was episode three, right? Uh, making bread at home. Don't have to buy it at the store anymore. I will go ahead and let this rest and when it's done, I'll cut it up and I'll be sure to post some pictures at the end of this video so you all can see what the inside looks like. Thank you again for joining me today as we tackle this adventure of trying to make bread at home, which it ended up turning out really well. And um, to be honest, I am, I am surprised. <laughs> I thought it I thought it wasn't gonna go so well, but um because you see those bread videos all the time where it's like hit or miss, so um I'm I'm really surprised that this turned out. And I enjoy you all joining this journey with me. Uh please comment, like, and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you guys next time. Alright, friends, it is cold. Smells delicious. I got my taste tester over here off camera. We're gonna go ahead and tilt the camera down so you guys can see me cut into it. We're going to try out our homemade bread. All right. Here it is, it's a little dense. Not as fluffy, but the true test is, do you want to put some peanut butter or something on it? Yeah. Yeah? Let me get a butter. Yeah. All right, friends. He's getting a butter knife. I'm going to put this on a cutting board because I don't want to damage my... He's getting some jelly. All right. Show the peeps what you got. He wants to stay off camera, which is okay. Some days I feel like I should stay off the camera too. <laughs> All right, show them your bread. Can't see it. Oh, there. Some homemade jelly on it. Let's see. What is the verdict? It's good. Mm -hmm. It's good. I'm gonna try it without anything on it. That's not bad, guys. That's not bad.